It's uh, 4.39 in the morning. It's the first chance I've got to sit down. I'm on a night shift, obviously, so it's time to record a video. It's currently the Cricket World Cup going on here in England. Now, before half of you switch off out of boredom, just use one of those YouTube filters to replace every time I say cricket with baseball, and you'll follow this video just fine. In fact, any sport which involves something hard, traveling at high speed, whether it's a hockey puck, a fist, a quaffle, a bludger, although I don't think a snitch is quite heavy enough. Because this is the latest in a string of videos where I decide to scare the crap out of people for no good reason. Because tonight we're going to talk about the five point palm exploding heart technique, whether it's real and how it's related to sport. This video would have gone in my Minute Medicine series, but I was threatened with legal action seriously by a company, so I had to change the name. So the name you guys came up with for these shorter, simpler videos is In A Heartbeat, which is much better anyway. So this is the first official In A Heartbeat video. You could refer to me as a cricket obsessive, so I wanted to make a video in honor of the Cricket World Cup and relate it back to cardiology in some way, and that isn't actually very difficult because cricket or baseball or even a Shaolin master can all cause sudden death. Sadly, young athletes die in all sports because very rarely they'll have an underlying undiagnosed heart condition and competing in any sport at a high level puts your heart under more strain than, say, sitting in an office and they're therefore more likely to suffer a cardiac arrest. James Taylor, a very talented England cricketer, had his career cut short just as it was taking off, having to retire at the age of only 26 due to a very rare heart condition called arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. This is where the healthy muscle of the heart is replaced by this kind of fibrous, fatty, useless tissue which doesn't pump properly, but it also predisposes you to dangerous rhythms which can kill. So patients like this often get defibrillators implanted, but to prevent them or reduce the likelihood of them having a cardiac arrest in the first place, you have to tell athletes diagnosed with conditions like this that they have to give up competitive sport. And having done this to, uh, for a few young people, nobody at the level of James Taylor, but sort of teenagers, and having to tell them that they can't pursue their dream is, is really crushing for them and a horrible feeling. This is actually a picture of James Taylor with Fabrice Mwambo, who I mentioned in my hypothermia video, another sportsman who had to retire due to a heart condition. So if you want to know more about uh, heart conditions and athletes, let me know. But today what I'm going to talk about is people who have died who have no underlying heart problems at all, or completely healthy. I will just say at this point that I make these videos to hopefully be educational and occasionally entertaining, but please don't get the impression that sport is too dangerous to take part. The likelihood of any of the problems in this video occurring are incredibly small, whereas the chances of deriving benefit from taking part in sport are pretty much 100%. So don't use this channel as an excuse to be a lazy bum. I see you sitting there eating your Pringles. Come on, get up, do some burpees. Let's go. I mean, obviously finish watching this video first. For hundreds of years in Chinese martial arts legend, there have been accounts of dimak, the touch of death. The hell is a dimak? Death touch. Where somebody just drops down dead after being struck in a certain way. Now, a lot of these cases were probably just internal bleeding causing a delayed death. But sometimes practitioners would strike somebody and they would drop down dead much sooner than that. And they talk about interrupting the flow of chi by hitting certain points on the body which are vulnerable, like in the neck. In 2014, another extremely talented cricketer, Philip Hughes, um, was struck just underneath his helmet in the neck by a bouncer, a fast ball, and he collapsed almost instantaneously. The ball had caused a dissection, a, a tear in the vertebral artery, which runs around here, supplying the brain. And it caused a huge bleed in his brain. And sadly, he died at only the age of 25. The most dramatic cases of DIMAC, where somebody dies instantly, can be explained by something called commotio cordis, literally shaking or agitating the heart, a phenomenon where somebody can go into a cardiac arrest if they're struck at exactly the right time in exactly the right place in the chest. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure right was the correct adjective there. I, I told you I do struggle with that. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
down. Pretty much everyone has been thumped in the chest by something, but I doubt many of us know people that have died as a result of it, so what's going on? Um, if you're an animal lover, do me a favour and don't look up the trials about how we found this stuff out. The cardiac cycle is shown here. For simplicity's sake, let's take a heart rate of 60, and therefore this takes one second, or 1000 milliseconds. If you are struck in a very particular place, which I'm not going to share with you because it is a secret, known only to dim Mac masters, unless you just look it up on PubMed. But anyway, I don't want any of you practicing this on your little brother. But if you're struck in this place, during a very short 10 to 20 millisecond window, i.e. 1 to 2 percent of the cardiac cycle, then you can precipitate commotio cordis. At this point, the heart is electrically vulnerable. There's just the right amount of disarray of myocardial repolarization, i.e. the spread of electrical activity across the heart, and a specific change in the pressure inside the heart that allows mechanical force to be transferred into electrical activity and to put the heart into ventricular fibrillation, which for medical professionals is a rhythm with a profound autodefecatory response, meaning that when you see it on a monitor, you sh** your pants. However, prompt defibrillation with an AED, a defibrillator, is highly likely to be successful in these people, which is why every sports facility should have at least one AED. Now, please don't go punching people in the chest or throwing bowling balls at Steve from accounts, even though we all hate Steve. This is not a sponsored video, but I wanted to end by telling you about something called Nebula. As you're probably aware, YouTube is facing all kinds of problems these days. But even without those, I've got my own problems with YouTube in that I sit down to watch one of my favorite creators like Real Engineering, Up and Atom, Kuzgesagt, or Polyphonic. And before I know it, I'm wasting time watching clips of kung fu movies and videos of people getting hit by cricket balls. <laughs> So having a website with the best educational creators and only them is a great way to ensure you only watch quality content. There are no ads, there's no algorithm that needs to be gamed, and best of all it's made by creators, not a third party, for people like you. As I said this is not sponsored, but my declaration is that through some administrative cock-up I happen to be there as well. There is an entirely free seven-day trial and thereafter it's only five bucks a month if you decide to continue with what I hope will be a really important and useful alternative to YouTube and the problems that are currently dogging it. If you want to find out more about my next videos, there's something on the community tab. You can catch me on Twitter or even Instagram, which I'm trying really hard to maintain, but um, I hate it.